Welcome to a new tutorial. In this case, I'm going to show you how to retrieve weather data from the National Climatic uh, Data Center. So open your browser and type www.ncdc.noaa.gov. And then once you're in the web pages, see that there are many, many links and many things you can look for in this, this page. It's probably one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, weather databases. But I will just simply show you how to retrieve some useful data. So let's go to the very first link that says I want to search for data at a particular location. So just let's go ahead and click here. Now we are in the climate data online. And again, there are many links that you can explore and actually encourage you to do that. Uh, see here at the bottom, we have a drought information, a satellite, severe weather, um, climate data records, maybe something similar to what we are going to do now, uh, anything. So I will just show you how to browse some data sets. So let's just go ahead and click here. And, and now we are prompted with several uh, data sets. We have uh, annual summaries, daily summaries, monthly summaries, and several others. You can actually expand each of these data sets and you have a short description about what are the variables and what are the, the locations. In this case, for annual summaries, we have a climate summaries for the US. So if we want something more uh, like a global scale, we may want to explore uh, daily summaries. So if we uh, expand, we can see that our global uh, daily observations from around the world. Also notice that uh, some of the variables are included here. We have maximum and minimum temperatures, total precipitations, snowfall, and several other uh, variables within daily summaries. To retrieve the data, um, or to look for the data and to retrieve the data, there are uh, some tools that we can use. We have the a search bar tool, a mapping tool, and FTP. In this case, I'm going to show you the mapping tool, which is, I think is, is the best one. It's, it's interactive and you can sort of see all the stations uh, around the world at the same time. So let's just go ahead and click Mapping Tool. Now, since there are uh, many, many stations, this may take a few seconds or even a couple minutes, depending on the speed of uh, your internet connection. Okay. As you can see many stations around the world from different networks and you can see the networks are here in this sort of a layers uh, display you can collapse you can close it and then if you want to open it again just go to the toolbar here layers click and then you can expand it or collapse it again in this case i'm going to close it because we are not going to use it uh, and then we have some tools that you can again click and drag just to move them uh, out of the way and we have a uh, select by rectangle or select by polygon we will be using at least one of these shortly so I'm gonna leave it here and then you can uh, zoom there is a zoom bar right here zoom in and if you click in the on the stations nothing is going to happen so we have to go to the toolbar one more time and click in identify now we have sort of this uh, black uh, pointer and this is sort of a cross. Now if we click on the station, some information is prompted to us. So we can see uh, the city, the country, in this case Libya, the, probably the network that is coming, the, the, all the meteorological organization, the station ID, the beginning date, which is in 1956, the end date, 2014, and some other information such as latitude, longitude, and elevation. You can collapse this, you can also move it out of the way. You can expand it. Now you can also select uh, by rectangle. So you can actually, if you have a, an area of interest, you can just select that. And all the stations with that area of interest will be selected and uh, prompted to you right here. So if you're looking for stations in this region that uh, have more than 50 
uh, years of data, then you can just look at begin and end date and actually select the ones that meet that uh, criteria. Uh, in this case, we have uh, less than 50. This one may fit right there, so you can select that. You can select several, you can select all, or you can just close this, and this will disappear. So in this case, I'm going to go back to identify. I'm going to select this station, Kufra in Libya, and then I'm going to click here. I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to click Get Select Data right here at the bottom. And now we, uh, we have sort of a, a cart where we have several options before we, we retrieve our data. In this case, I'm going to select a CSV because I can open this with Excel or I can even uh, upload this file to Google Fusion Tables. I'm going to select the, the range of the data. I remember it started in 1956, so I'm going to scroll down to 1956. And see that automatically it detects what is the initial day at least the initial year and then since I have that set I'm going to choose one day and see that apply has to be a blue in order to be uh, in order we can make a selection then apply and if you selected uh, several stations and you regret some of the selection then you can delete some of the stations in this at, the, at this time so continue and now we have some uh, details. Uh, in this case, I want to include the geographic location and I want to include the data flags, which has uh, maybe uh, some suspicious data, uh, data points or maybe what happened. So I may want to take a look at this if I need to. And then what variables do I want? So I want precipitation. And actually, if you expand precipitation, we know that it's a precipitation in tens of millimeters and also earth temperature. We have maximum and minimum temperature in tens of uh, degrees Celsius. So watch out the, uh, the units. I'm going to select all of them. Click continue. And now we have to review the order as we do with anything. Uh, like uh, when you buy something in Amazon, just make sure that um, your selection is correct. That the, the, the period 1956 to 2014 is correct. The, um, variables that you select are okay and importantly that the location that you selected is is also correct then just type your email and then type it again okay and submit order okay now an email that the request was successfully submitted is going to be sent to uh, my email account. And then another email, a second one, is going to be sent uh, saying that the data is available for uh, to be retrieved. So I go to my email. And sometimes you will not see your primary account. You may go to your spam, or in this case, I think it goes to the promotions. So we go to submit it. That was the first email I got. And you can just see that the order status was submitted. And then if you go back again, you have complete. And this is the one you want to open. And you scroll down. You can see a link to download the data. If you click here, then it will ask you where to save it. I'm going just to save it in the desktop. You can just write a sort of Libya with CSV. Save it. In this case, we I had another another version of the same file before, and then you can just simply open it in uh, in Excel. So now you have uh, your station, elevation, um, precipitation with some missing values, um, maximum temperature, minimum. So now you can start playing with this data. Okay, I think uh, this is uh, all for this tutorial, and I hope it was useful. Please. Uh, Send me an email if you have any question. Thank you so much.